When Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge got announced last year, I was pretty excited. Maybe that would come as a surprise because of the fact that I was not alive back when the TMNT arcade and home console beat-em-ups were in their prime, but when I was a kid, the 6th generation consoles got a plethora of TMNT-based games, which I played almost all of. The Konami trilogy based on the 2003 4 Kids series had tried to take those older arcade classics and give them a modern 3D twist. It didn't really light a spark in the audience compared to more complex 3D action titles from that era, but still, I played these games a lot. TMNT 2 Battle Nexus even included a port of TMNT the arcade game, and then TMNT 3 Mutant Nightmare included a version of Turtles in Time, the most fondly remembered TMNT arcade game. My point in all that is that classic TMNT arcade action is definitely within my wheelhouse. And so, the new Shredder's Revenge game had me intrigued. Especially because the developers at .mu clearly showed themselves to be passionate fans of the 1987 TMNT cartoon and its accompanying video games through these behind-the-scenes clips that they'd post on their YouTube channel. They also showed themselves as talented with their previous game, Streets of Rage 4, another retro beat-em-up revival being released to critical acclaim. Needless to say, they were perfect candidates to handle this project, which was released on all modern platforms just a few weeks back on June 16th. Like Sonic Origins last week, I'm a little late to the punch here, but I figured I'd get a quick review out to tell everyone what I thought of the game, given how I have a decently sized audience of TMNT fans now. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. One of the first things you could tell about this game from its announcement is its visual style. Shredder's Revenge features a pixel art aesthetic that looks quite sharp on the screen. One of my favorite things about more modern pixel art games is just how fluid the animation is compared to the more limited animation from the games that inspired these ones. As the sprites themselves are colorful, detailed, and have expressive animations with tons of frames in said animations, with lots of visual callbacks to moments from the show that fans would easily pick up on. It's not just the in-game art style that I appreciate, I also think the art style of the game's promotional material looks fantastic too. Special shout out to the fact that they make the turtles look all buff in the artwork. Such an odd TMNT staple, where the promotional material on action figures look all mean and green, but then in-game or in-show, none of that is there. They also have this well-animated intro movie that comes before the game with fast movement, expressive animations, and a cool remix of the classic TMNT theme. When actually getting into the game, I thought it was really fun. Classic beat-em-ups are a pretty simple kind of game. You get a few attacks and you use them against the onslaught of enemies that come your way. In Shredder's Revenge, the combat isn't that much different from what it was like in Turtles in Time, so if you played that game, you should be familiar with how it goes. You get a basic combo, some air attacks, a special attack, and you have the ability to grab enemies and toss them into the screen, which is pretty cool. Each character comes with little differences to distinguish them, like Leonardo, my favorite, being a good all-around option when it comes to range and speed, Donatello having the most range, Master Splinter being the heaviest, and April being the fastest. If you want to feel like you're going combo mad, then you're best picking April because I was tossing enemies into the sky and bashing them with the microphone and camera. It was fun to play as her, but I also thought that it was fun to play as everyone. Like I said, Leo's definitely my favorite, mainly because he's always been my favorite turtle, but each character is worth messing around with. At the start, you can pick any of the four turtles as well as Master Splinter and April. You unlock Casey after the game is over as well for a bit of extra replay value. The more you play the game, the more you level up your character of choice to get more moves, like a special attack from the air, a special attack while dodging, and an increased health bar. But like I said, you only level up the character you're playing as, so that gives the game more replay value as you unlock all the moves for each of the seven characters. However, these unlocks don't really change the game much if you're coming into this hoping to go combo mad like it's Devil May Cry because this is just not that kind of game. You don't really unlock any extra combos on the ground as the combat's meant to be pretty easy to pick up and play, which won't be for everyone, but I enjoyed it for what it was worth. Above all else, I enjoyed the visual spectacle and sound design as you bash through all these enemies with colorful effects and impactful sounds. It definitely kept me engaged for the two hours it took to beat the campaign. Oh, and on the subject of the sound design, I want to give props to the team for getting the voices of the four turtles from the classic cartoon back to do the voice clips for the game. That's the kind of thought and effort they didn't have to do, but they did. When I first played this game, I decided to take advantage of the online multiplayer experience by getting five of my friends to join me throughout the game. I was afraid of the online having a bad connection as we had players from all over the country and overseas in my party, but thankfully the stability was fantastic. No noticeable input lag and it ran at a perfect 60 frames per second while playing. So because of that, I'd say the game was worth experiencing single player and with multiplayer to get the most out of the experience. That's because in multiplayer, you get a fun dynamic with your team as when they die, you have to revive them in a limited amount of time without getting hit yourself, which ups the tension in that brief moment. A mechanic that is obviously lost in single player where you just have a set number of lives before getting a game over. However, it's in single player where you get to see the variety of the various enemies. 
The foot soldiers you face throughout the game all come in various colors with different weapons. Some have shields you need to break, others have projectiles like arrows, shurikens, or a ball and chain, changing how you have to approach the combat with those enemies. But in multiplayer, my first exposure to the game, you don't see any of that. We had six players, so we were just steamrolling the entire game, not seeing a single different attack because with all these special attacks and bodies flying all over the screen, the enemies barely even had the time to establish a pattern before being taken out. I think the sweet spot is probably having a team of three or four players in a higher difficulty, but six players made the game pretty easy and kind of broken. There's a mechanic where you can taunt and that refills your special gauge. In single player, it's difficult to abuse that mid-combat with a boss fight, for example, even though I tried. But in multiplayer, there were five other players fighting at all times, so it's pretty easy to abuse this system. Although on the subject of the balance, I don't like how one player can just stand at the left of the screen and halt everyone's gameplay when we need to move forward. It should be that the screen scrolls automatically to eliminate trolling of that kind. We also had an issue where, when starting a stage, all our characters would be invisible and we need to quickly disconnect from the lobby and rejoin in order to get back in. But even with all that said, I had a great time playing this in multiplayer. Against bosses, for example, it was a lot of fun to have all the players using their special attacks at the same time and watching the light show unfold as the health bar would go way down. And in general, that's my overall take on Shredder's Revenge. I thought the game was really fun and entertaining for the few hours I spent playing it for the video. As a longtime fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I loved all the various references to the classic cartoon, I enjoyed the simple but effective combat, I thought the visuals were phenomenal and the game had enough replay value to where I'm probably going to keep coming back to it in the coming weeks and wouldn't mind replaying it in the future. If you like these kind of games or simply like TMNT, I highly recommend it. Especially for the low price of 25 bucks. You could do a lot worse. But that's all the time we have for today. Let me know if you liked this video in the comments below as I actually enjoy doing these quicker impressions type videos and want to do more of them in the future. In the meantime, the next video will begin the big summer retrospective where we'll finally tackle the Jack and Daxter series and the definitive retrospective those games deserve. And as for TMNT, I see clearly how much demand there is for me to talk about the 2012 show, so one day that shall happen. Probably next year. We also have that new retro TMNT collection coming out later this year, so I'll do a video on that if people want to hear my thoughts. But in the meantime, I'll say what I always do. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.